and welcome to the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. It is the Top 16 Superstars and the Manufacturer Series. My name is Tom Brooks. Alongside me, Chaz Draycott. Chaz, great to have you back here, and we're really looking forward to this Manufacturer Series action today. It is great to be back with you, Tom. And yes, indeed, we've got some fantastic racing ahead of us today. Uh, we're going to be looking at these Top 16 Superstars driving some of the best machinery in the world, especially that that you can get on Gran Turismo as well. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. More on that in a few moments' time. Let's take a look, shall we, firstly, at the regional point standings for the uh, Oceana region before we get this one underway then. So Aiken Amos leads the way at the top of the pile, but by the smallest of margins to Nick Makosi there, otherwise known, of course, as Cody Lukowski in second position. Adam 2167 there in third place for Ford as well. He's on 12,556 points. Now, should uh, clarify, it's not necessarily about where you finish in the point standings, but where you finish for your manufacturer. So say, for example, uh, you're Nick Mikosi, you're with Mercedes, you're second in the standings. Now, you're the lead driver for that manufacturer in the standings. That's great for you because you, you're doing really well. Uh, and of course, uh, you've got no competition around you. So if uh, Mercedes make it through to the Manufacturer Series at the next World Tour event, uh, then you'll be representing them if, as long as you're all within the uh, top three drivers out of the five regions, if yeah. that makes sense, essentially. So uh, uh, say, for example, if you're uh, looking uh, a little bit further down the order, then, for example, with Subaru, Carbass, uh, and also Huezo there. Those two, uh, both Subaru drivers. Carbass is the lead driver for Subaru. He's ahead in the standings at the moment. So if Subaru made it through to the Manufacturer Series and qualified, then, of course, uh, you would have uh, Carbass being one of the drivers if, of course, he's in the top three of the five regions. Yeah, there's plenty of, the, plenty of things for these drivers to think about. It's not all just about in their own region and who's around them in that championship. You never know who could do what in every single region for each race. So there's no stepping off the gas for these guys. They've got to absolutely go for it in every single round. And that's why the racing is so frantic and so exciting to watch. In terms of the global standings then, as well for the manufacturer's rankings, you can see Lexus are at the top of the pile before uh, this round. They are leading the way 940 points compared to Mercedes-Benz on 898. Toyota, who've had a good run of things so far in the uh, old World Tour events that we've been doing, uh, you can see there that they are in third position, just ahead of BMW by, uh, well, only a handful of points, really. Um, compared to those guys. And then Porsche, Jaguar, Aston Martin, Ford, Alfa Romeo, Hyundai, Audi, and then Chevrolet complete the top 12 manufacturers uh, that we have there so far. So if you look at the Oceana region, you look at the numbers that you've got there. So for example, with Mercedes-Benz, you're Cody Lukowski, you're driving for that team. Uh, you're at the top of the pile in terms of the point standings before this one. So if you have another strong result, Mercedes, of course, have already qualified for World Tour 4. Uh, therefore, Cody will be one of the drivers. Yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing how much uh, actually depends on individual drivers as well at this stage so it'll be interesting to see whether the uh, the pressure gets to some of these guys as it gets further and further down the line so yeah i'm really really looking forward to this let's take a closer look shall we at the circuit the drivers are going to be competing on then here for this manufacturer series race and it is an absolutely fantastic circuit the circuit de barcelona catalonia based about an hour outside of barcelona in fact in a town called montmelo you can see 4.6 kilometers long came onto the F1 calendar in 1991, has been there ever since as well. And uh, you can see there's some fast and flowing turns, turn one, turn two, the long turn three, then you go down in towards turn four. Not too many slow corners, just turn 10 really, the hairpin, uh, just where the circuit of Barcelona Catalonia graphic is there. In terms of uh, elevation change, well, it is still very prominent on this track. 21, 29 points, six meters, I should say. Yeah, it's um, it's quite strong when you're going up the hill towards the, uh, the fast right-hander before the back straight. Um, it can sort of... It, it tricks a lot of drivers because a lot of the grip comes to you as you go up the hill. Just around turn nine, you can see there at the top of the screen. And the grip comes towards you as you go up the hill. And then just as you get to the crest as you turn in, it's a bit sort of misleading because then suddenly the grip's gone away again and you're pretty much trying to be flat out in a lot of high downforce cars. So it'll be interesting to see if that catches anyone out here and especially because there's a penalty line there that you can see as well. So it adds a bit more of uh, a bit more of an exciting factor into the mix. Yeah, you've got a short blast down towards turn 10. You get hard on the brake, so that's an overtuning off of taking uh, place as well as uh, the start finish rate, of course, down towards turn one as well. Uh, so let's take a closer look show at the race details for this one then and just guide you through exactly what's going to be happening. So we're in group three machinery as well. Uh, so that is going to be very exciting indeed. Racing hard and medium compound tyres available to the drivers. More on that in a couple. Uh, qualifying that they've already had of 10 minutes. They've got a nine lap race to complete. Five times fuel consumption, 11 times tyre wear there as well. Now in terms of the strategy here, Shaz, with the racing hard and medium tyres, the medium tyres, they'll go five laps. The hard tyres, they will go the full race distance but look at the gap in terms of the pace 1.2 seconds so mm. it's the risk over reward isn't it here 
Yeah, definitely. And I think if you look at the uh, the pit loss time as well, you've got four seconds plus the actual stop. It only takes about two seconds for tyre change. So, you know, balancing that out with nine laps of losing over a second each time, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to uh, to maintain that if they stick to the hards. Well, of course, they'll have to put a bit of fuel on board as well. So that would take the overall pit stop time probably up to about 11 or 12 seconds by mm. the time uh, they get out on track as well. So uh, keep a keen eye out, see if there are any unusual strategies going to take place. But we're probably expecting the drivers to be starting on at least the medium compound of tyres. What they do after that, though, is entirely up to them. So let's wait and find out, shall we, as we head over to the grid for the start of the race. The Manufacturer Series race here at the Circuit of Barcelona, Catalonia. Nick Mercosi for Mercedes-Benz has qualified on pole position. B-Spec Bob there in the Honda NSX is in second place. Then you've got VLX Dinos in third position in the BMW. So, down towards that first corner, a rolling start for these drivers. It's going to be very interesting because look at the difference in manufacturers. We've got pretty much uh, entirely different manufacturers all the way down the order. So that is going to be hugely exciting. It really is. And a very important thing to note as well, Hueso is actually qualified ahead of Carpas for Subaru, so he's going to try and uh, decrease that deficit, of course, make sure he can, uh, well, be the one that's representing them at the World Tour event. Exactly right. So through the right hand, we go the final turn. We're going to do a rolling start then over the timing line. The circuit, the Barcelona, Catalonia plays host to the Manufacturer Series race for the Oceana region here. Nine laps of exciting racing action to come. Lights out then and over the line as we go for blast off. Good start from Nick Mikosi, but everybody else darting into the slipstream behind. This is where Mikosi, of course, is going to be at a disadvantage. You can see VLX Dino there trying to go for the inside line against Beastbeck Bob down towards the first corner. Here's Mint GTR we're looking at in the Porsche. He goes for the outside line. He'll have the inside line in towards turn two but there's contact as well with VLX Dino. They come to blows at turn number one. Somebody else in the Ford Mustang also facing the wrong way. That's Adam 2167 actually as well. So that is big, big drama in the opening stages here. And you can see a penalty has been given there in the background of your shot uh, for one of the drivers. That'll be presumably for that contact on the opening lap here. Well, real drama there. It just looked like the BMW got out of shape, clipped the side of the Porsche and around went mid GTR. VLX Dinos being the... Uh, the, the main sort of root cause of that there just went in a little bit too hot but still in the lead though Nick Mikosi B-Spec Bob has not dropped off though we're looking at the Conzio at the moment in the uh, very wonderfully liveried, liveried uh, Lexus there very uh, sorry Hyundai I do apologise I thought it was the Lexus we were looking at <laughs> Cyril Hole behind him in the Lexus but these guys are still quite bunched up though fantastic looking NSX that as well for B-Spec Bob and hopefully Nick Mikosi will be uh, wanting not to look at it for much longer in his rear view mirror. Well, down onto the brace and towards turn 10. This is one of the uh, prime overtaking opportunities on this lap here. You can see Nick Mikosi there just missing the apex a trifle. That sends him out a little bit wide on corner exit. B-Spec Bob, meanwhile, just behind, not having too many dramas behind the wheel of that Honda NSX. Uh, so these guys running relatively close nose to tail at the moment and the field uh, very close to one another from uh, up to uh, from first up to about fifth position, uh, as you can see on your screen at the moment. A little bit of a gap being pronounced to uh, Carbac there in fifth place and that's really impressive actually from Carl Bass because he kept his nose clean and he was well down the order uh, on the grid at the start of this race and he's already up inside the top five at the end of lap one. Yeah I think he really benefited from the incidents and all the shenanigans that went on in front of him and he just managed to sneak through without any real loss there so he's going to be very happy with that. Looks like Beastbet Bob is gradually closing to Nick Mikosi. Oh, he's having the wow. lunge, he's having the lunge down the inside to turn one. There's contact between himself and Nick Mikosi. They run side by side nearly through turns two, but somehow Cody Lukowski in the Mercedes Benz just manages to hold on to the race lead there against the Honda. That was very, very tough stuff. I didn't think he was going to go for it from that far back, to be honest. We get a front row seat of it from the Concio at the moment. Just getting onto the brakes into the right hand. A very, very tough corner to get right that because you're turning while you're braking as well and just trying to balance the car. And because it's such a long corner, you want to keep your momentum, but it's very easy to wash it off. But it looks like Nick Mikosi at the moment is generating a bit of a train behind him here, but I don't really mind if I'm honest because look at it, it's GT3 <laughs> machinery. They look fantastic, don't they? They really do. On board here with TRL Hull in the Lexus. Of course, Lexus, the uh, reigning manufacturer series champions of 2018. They're in good shape so far as they sit at the uh, top of the standings as we saw at the start of this broadcast as well in the global ranking. So uh, they could be on course to take the crown again in 2019. But of course, that depends entirely on what happens in the uh, World Tour events. Aside from this, look at TRL Hull. He was having a sneaky look down the inside of the Conzio, forces the Hyundai driver to go defensive down in towards turn number 10 and hold off that. That charge and all the while he's defending he's losing crucial time to B-Spec Bob and Nick Mikosi as well in this 
drama in this strife that he is caught up in. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. Here is Aiken Amos then in the Jaguar F type. We're just looking at him in fifth position. Just in front of him is TRL Hull. Just behind them as well, of course, is Carbass, who's been making his way very quickly through the field there. So let's see what will happen. Out of the final corner we go then over the timing line already to start the third lap. And of course, we know that strategy is going to be very important in this race. When are the drivers going to pit on the medium compound of tyres? I don't think they're going to be able to stretch it out another four laps after their useful shelf life is over. No, definitely not. I think they've just got to uh, got to bite the bullet and just come in when necessary. You may see one or two guys try and stretch it that extra lap more just for a bit of clear air. You may see people come in a bit early and get the undercut and hope that they can keep the life in the tyres till the end. But you never know really with these boys, do you? I mean, we've seen it before. We've tried to call it and, well, we're, we've been quite often wrong, haven't we? Let's face it. <laughs> but um, Nick McCosey trying to stay cosy at the front at the moment you see A.E. Konomos there in the Jaguar the wonderful F-Type this is the uh, the Lexus now just chasing the Conzio in what I incorrectly did not call the Hyundai earlier but look at the uh, the different line out of there actually Tom he's carrying the momentum and he's got a really good run yeah, really good up in towards turn number seven and then flick it right into turn eight over that sausage curve on the inside there and settles the car just a, a trifle. Meanwhile, Nick McCosey out in the lead of this race. He's now got a 1.4 second advantage. You can see him clearing off into the distance with clear track in front of him, exactly what he wanted to and needed to do. Now, are we going to see any moves being made down in towards turn number 10? Look at the Lexus there in the background. He was having a little look as TRL Hole on the inside there of the Hyundai. Did he manage to make the move stick? Yes, he did. He's up into third place. Brilliant bit of driving there from Hull. He is now ahead of the con and onto the top three positions in this race. Yeah, nice move there, really opportune. Down into turn 10, like you say, it was always going to be a really big overtaking opportunity, and he's just made the most of it. Might have been a little bit of contact mid-corner, but it's nothing too uh, too extravagant to have put them off. Oh, look at the different Car lines bass. there. Wow, the Subaru really, really effective through there. Big change of direction. I wasn't sure whether he'd cut the corner slightly, but he's pushed the Jaguar out of the way. See, and a bit on the size difference between those two cars, <laughs> massive as well. The big burly Subaru pushing the little Jaguar out of the way and through he goes. Quazo into the pits there in the uh, second Subaru in this race there as well. So he's deciding to go, of course, onto the medium compound of tyres, putting a uh, bit of fuel in the car. 10.7 seconds is the pit stop time for him at the end of lap three. Of course, it'll be a little bit longer for these guys if they pit at the end of lap four. They'll have to take a bit more fuel on board, which will bring up that overall pit stop time. But look now at TRL Hull. That Lexus is really hooking up nicely, and he's looking very threatening against the Honda NSX driver. Subsequently, the Honda seems to be struggling a little bit on its tyres at the moment, looking like it's understeering a bit wide through some corners perhaps the setup of the car isn't right but he's just not looking comfortable at all compared to TRL Hull who is on rails in third place yeah that Lexus looks very planted doesn't it it's quite a big car as well so you'd expect it to uh, to be moving around a bit but yeah he really does look like he's got the turn in in that car sorted out so we'll see how he gets on against Beast Bet Bob over these next few laps whether one of them ducks into the pits and look at it he's just trying to turn it in as best he can the back end steps out doesn't get a good run, gets a bit of a wobble on it as well, and I think we might see TRL Hull go for a move here. Yeah, down in towards turn 10, he's taking a late lunge on the brakes. Beastbet Bob tries to move over under the braking zone, but Tyrell Hull is through on the inside. Beastbet Bob tries to get the cutback and the switchback through the left-hander, but he's not able to do so. He doesn't draw alongside, and Hull is now ahead, but he gets a really poor run there through the following right-hander. Is that going to compromise him as they come down in towards the chicane? It doesn't, actually. It really doesn't. So he's able to hold on to it very nicely indeed. Down through into the left. Then they're going to oh. flick it right. Any pit stops being made? No, not for Nick McCosey. He does. In fact, he does pit. I think he has pitted, or has he not? Let's see what's going to happen. Tyrell Hall is in the pit lane. No, so Nick McCosey has gone on for another lap there. Beast met Bob also the Conzio and Carbass following suit there into the pit lane. Nick McEwen is going to inherit, uh, sorry, Matt McEwen, rather, I should say, is going to inherit fourth position as they all make their pit stops in the early stages. But uh, Nick McCosey there deciding not to go for the undercut here that's an interesting strategy call yeah I think he's if he's comfortable on the tyres then he's just going to go and try and stretch them that one lap extra you know if he's got the pace and he's in the lead he's got a bit of a gap he can sort of take that risk of you know losing a bit of time on a lap but I reckon he might be okay here to be honest and of course he'll have fresher rubber at the end so if he does need to make any ground back then he's in a bit more of a safe situation just look at Side Dog here in the uh, the Toyota there is the Porsche Mint GTR of course caught up in all that strife on the first lap at the first corner he's chasing Matthew McEwen now in the wonderful looking uh, Chevrolet Corvette big beefy car really isn't it the, uh, <laughs> the Chevy he's not quite hit the apex though yeah you can see here with Mint GTR of course it's damage limitation now for uh, him 
over the course of this race following the uh, dramas that he had out on circuit as we uh, saw at that first turn he's making his way uh, back through the field up into fifth position of course at the, uh, inheriting those places because everybody else behind him has uh, made some pit stops so where he is going to emerge after pitting for tyres uh, will remain to be seen but you would imagine of course it will be at the back of this gaggle of uh, cars quite significantly so down towards turn number 10 we go there is B-Spec Bob in uh, seventh position of course and uh, well B-Spec Bob he's made that pit stop as we know likewise the Conzio who's behind and also Car Bass who we're looking at as well as TRL Hole and uh, TRL Hole actually as well of course who's made that pit stop has dropped back here compared to Car Bass and the Conzio so things haven't gone his way out of that pit stop there he's lost a couple of positions and that is not ideal in any way shape or form because he's now got all that hard work to do to get up into uh, the podium positions once again bit of a miss apex there again for uh, Matt McEwen coming through the final corner he pits likewise FSR weapon and uh, oh, I thought it's going to be a late call there from the Porsche driver yeah. of uh, Min GTR but he goes on for another lap here and likewise Nick Mikosi the race leader so the uh, top four drivers in this race haven't pitted now that is very very interesting. I don't think I, I, I can't imagine they're going to go to the end of this on uh, the medium tyres. They're going to be absolutely toast by the end of this race. Yeah, they really will be. I think they may just call it with like maybe one or two laps to go at this point. But you never know, do we, with these boys? I mean, th th some of them get comfortable on tyres. Um, some drivers adapt really well to cars that aren't handling well. As we see the Subaru of Car Bass there, I'm going to go with the Conzi, and he's got it done. Yeah, down in towards turn number four we go of Sayat. Look Ooh. at the oh, Honda looking up the inside of uh, Min GTR in the Porsche there. Did he manage to get a move done? Not quite through there, but very, very close indeed. Min GTR, of course, is a bit of a sitting duck given the fact he's on oh. the... Oh, look at that. What a move there from Beastmet Bob down the inside of the Honda. But he runs it too deep and he gets biffed off wide there by Min GTR as he comes back onto the circuit. And now Carl Bass and the Conzio are coming through. A penalty being given there for Min GTR. Personally, I think that was the right call because we saw him moving over on corner exit and you can't get away with that. You just can't do it. No, definitely not. He wasn't happy about, uh, about Beastmet Bob going down the inside, but I think he actually got a hit to be fair from Carbass as well I think there was contact that really pushed him down the inside so uh, obviously it looked like Mint GT I didn't really understand the situation of why B-Spec Bob was there but we certainly saw him take it out on him though and it's a shame but at the end of the day the penalty like you say Tom was the right call I'm wondering actually here if uh, Nick McCosey is going to have enough of an advantage to make a pit stop he's got seven seconds over Aik and Amos but he have got, they have got a further four seconds you can see there back to uh, Car Bass but I don't know if he's going to have enough of an advantage to make a pit stop, so he might not be having much of a choice other than to go to the end of the race on these tyres. There's nothing in the rules that says they can't do that, but I just don't know whether he's going to be a sitting duck or not. I mean, there's a significant margin that they've got to make up on the rest of the field, but they have got fresher rubber. They've got more pace quite clearly there as well. I just don't know whether that's going to work. Min GTR and Adam 2167, of course, drivers who were caught up in strife at the first corner, uh, as we saw, are now in the pit lane. They make their stops. Again, onto the medium compound of tyres, taking a little bit of fuel on board there as well. Now, here is Aiken Amos. He's got a bit of uh, clear space in front of him, as you can see. Nick McCosey nowhere to be seen. Bit of uh, closer company in the form of Psydog behind in the Toyota. But this could be an interesting strategy call. Are they going to go to the end of this race without pitting? I just, I, I don't know if it's going to work, but the thing is they're running out of time, the drivers behind, to make up any advantage. So I think that he might be all right, actually, because the pace difference between them, yeah, OK, sure, it's a bit significant. It's about uh, a second and a half or so, but I just don't think they're going to be able to close up. No, I don't think uh, towards the end of the race they're going to be able to make that many inroads, to be honest. And he's going to be on the newer rubber as well. So if he does need to defend or if he you know, needs to eke out a gap, then he's going to have the ability to do it a bit more than the guys chasing him down. Um, just having a look now, Beast Pit Pop and uh, TRL Hull still having this titanic battle together, though. It's the little NSX against the very big burly Lexus again. But that's the wonderful thing about GT3 racing and these, these category of cars, because they're, they're so diverse. But TRL Hull's been great here on the brakes all day. Oh, he's, he's deep, though. He's though. deep. There's contact between them, and you saw the Honda there of Beast Pit Bob trying to take the switch back, but he just collided with the rear of the Lexus. And, well, a forceful overtake there, because Beast Pit Bob had nowhere to go. But I think that was pretty harsh, but very fair, actually, uh, there from material hole he tried his best to avoid contact he was way late on the brakes he was never going to make the apex into that turn but he did as best as he could to try and uh, make sure that both drivers didn't suffer too much going through that corner yeah definitely and I think uh, it was it was just a bit of misjudgment from B-Spec Bob there he tried to get the cut back like you say but just because of when he chose to do it he just clipped that rear corner of TRL Hall and that was it and you know it negates all chance of doing it he's dropped off a bit, um, dropped off him a bit now so it's going to be down to uh, the Conzio and TRL Hall for that battle I think they've been battling all race long and 
They need to keep it going. We look at Carbus now, though, in the Subaru. What a great job he's doing. Yeah, bear in mind, of course, he's the driver who's made a pit stop, whereas Sidog has not. And uh, well, those tyres are very second hand here on this penultimate lap now as well. So it's only a matter of time, surely, before Carbas is going to be able to find his way through. He's uh, going to be uh, trying to challenge for third position and could potentially challenge for second because A. Canemos is not too far away here either. Coming down in towards turn number five, we go. Will Bass think about a move? No, not quite going off through there. He's going to have to wait a little bit later on, surely, out of turn nine and down towards turn ten on that short straight is where we're going to see that move being made but you can see him up the inside there in the forefront of your shots Carbas does get through on corner exit against Sidog such is the advantage of the newer tyres he got better traction out of turn five he was able to pull alongside and get ahead of the Kiwi then as they come through the right hand and now Carbas's next target is going to be coming onto this final lap it will be A. Canemos so second place could be on the cards here for Carbas and that is going to be a very impressive result so he is a driver who's managed to make that pit stop strategy work very well indeed there for him having good pace on that newer tyre, whereas Nick McCosey has been able to make the uh, medium tyre last all race long, so he's just been very, very gentle on them. He's had clear track in front of him, he's had good pace as well, he's now 9.2 seconds down the road of A.E. Canemos here, so brilliant stuff. Yeah, it's been amazing to see from Carbas, though, to be fair. I mean, it, it's like he got those new tyres and it just completely changed who he is. He just, he's just gone for it. Um, of course, it's going to be difficult for him to... Oh, it's uh, wide in the final corner. Oh, Sorry oh. there, Chaz. Sorry, no, he was properly going here. You're right. He was really, really on the limit around that last corner. Though. Penalty as well. He's been given a half-second penalty for exceeding track limits here, so that could really hinder Carbas. Look at the battles in the background, though, taking place. The Corvette, I think it is, that is uh, trying to defend, or maybe it's the Ferrari of Lionface who is uh, going head-to-head -head as well. Look at it down in towards turn number one. There's TRL Hull. You can see in the background there uh, a penalty for uh, B-Spec Bob for ex exceeding track limits there, presumably. And B-Spec Bob, let's not, bear, let's not forget, of course, uh, was inside the podium positions earlier on in this race. He's dropped right to the back of that group that were battling right before. And look at this as well. As you can see, side by side, the Conzio trying to go down the inside of Sidog. So he's a sitting duck. Is Sidog here. He's on the outside. And TRL Hull is going to try and follow him through here as well. And he does so. Brilliant stuff there. So two positions lost for Cy Bishop down in towards turn number five we go. And TRL Hull is going to really pile the pressure on and Sidog has got no grip underneath him at all but of course don't forget that B-Spec Bobby the Honda NSX has got that one second penalty here's Carbas putting the pressure onto A.E. Canemos but he's going to get a penalty exactly where he doesn't want it to it's going through turn 9 it's on this straight it's his best chance to attack he's going to ghost for half a second he pulls out and there you go that's it that's it done unless he can do something into the final sector third is going to be the best that Carbas can hope for here yeah, he's really just got to get these last few corners nailed. This is going to be so, so close. He's got the grip underneath him in comparison. Oh, oh look at this! Oh, Conzio and Hull side by side. The Conzio defending this because Hull pushed him pretty much past side dog before. He's not quite made it stick. Here, Here comes Carbas. Pass. He's going to try and find his way through down the inside, but he's not quite close enough. Aiken Amos defends the line into the final series of chicanes. We go a bit of a bump there from Bass as we come through into the final sector. Nick McCosey takes the checker flag, but into the final corner. Side by side we come. Carbas on the inside, and he does it at the final turn, Carbas manages to get ahead of Aiken Amos on the final lap at the final corner, absolutely brilliant stuff there from Carbas Aiken Amos in third, the Conzio finishes in fourth place TRL Hull didn't manage to get himself ahead of the Hyundai and Sidog when he lost nearly four positions on that last lap down in sixth position but he was able to stay ahead of B-Spec Bob of course following that penalty for B-Spec Bob in the Honda but what an absolutely brilliant race there Nick Mercosi takes the chequered flag 11.3 seconds he stretched it out throughout the entirety of that one there Chaz perfect call from the Australian yeah he just managed it so so well all the way throughout that but Driver of the race has to be Carbas. That was fantastic. He started really, really far down the order. Speaking of down the order, Mint GTR and VLX Dinos. Real shame for what happened to them at the beginning. It was actually quite nice to uh, to catch that at the end there. I think VLX Dinos actually just backed out just to let him have the place. It may not mean a lot based on where they are in the actual race, but I think he backed off there just to let him have it as a sort of apology for running into him at the beginning. So it's nice to see that sportsmanship. But yeah, great drive by Nick McCosey. Very, very mature. Very well kept. And of course, A.E. Canemus as well, finishing in third round and out the podium. He'll be happy with that. Yeah, very impressive stuff. And of course, that is where the uh, manufacturers uh, sit then, of course, after this race. What does it mean for the uh, regional standings for the Oceania region after this one? Well, let's take a closer look, shall we, and uh, piece it all together. So Nick McCosey now jumps ahead of A.E. Canemus. Canemus, of course, finishing down in third on the podium after that one. But now Nick McCosey is at the top of the pile for Mercedes-Benz. He certainly is. TRL Hall getting ahead of Side Dog, Car Bass ahead of Double H and Lion Face as well. The Conzio jumps up. Matthew McEwen didn't have... Uh, 
the best of races there in the uh, in the Corvette. VLX Dinos, of course, not a fantastic result for him. He's down to 12th. Beast Bet Bob, though, in the NSX, like you say, he started on, uh, started I think, second on the grid, actually, in that one. And he just dropped down gradually. But um, Hueso, of course, now, he had the chance to make that gap smaller to Carbass, his Subaru, you know, his sort of companion as such. Um, but now Carbass has just sort of stamped his authority on that and he's got away. Hugely impressive stuff from all the drivers involved. What does it mean for the uh, global rankings then after the Oceana region race? Well, Lexus still sitting at the top of the points there. Mercedes spends in second, but... BMW leapfrogs Toyota now. That disappointing result for Cy Bishop down in sixth place after losing all those positions on the final lap means that uh, they now drop into fourth place. Porsche inheriting fifth at the expense of Jaguar. Ford moves down the order there as well, as you can see, and Hyundai making ground on Alfa Romeo. Yeah, so big changes, actually. I think last time uh, last time I commentated on this, anyway, there, was, uh, there wasn't any changes at all after the, uh, the races that we had, so... Good to see that even so far through the series, it is actually still shifting around so much. Just shows you how much there is to play for at this point. Certainly does. Well, our focus now shifts over to the next manufacturer series action at the Red Bull Hangar 7 for World Tour 4. Our fourth stop on the 2019 FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships calendar. We've got action for you, as we said, from the manufacturer series and also the Nations Cup on Friday and Saturday, the 13th and 14th of September. From Chas Draycott and myself, Tom Brooks, thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you in Austria.